Okay, gang. So, one of the last two reactions we're going to do is something called reductive amination. And the best part is, and I'm just going to say this out loud and then show you, is that all we're going to do here is going to take a carbonyl with an amine, we're going to make an imine, a little throwback to chapter 17, and then all we're going to do is reduce it to an amine, and that's it. So you guys already know what's about to happen, but I'm going to just show you that you know it already. Okay, so let's take just a regular three carbon carbonyl, let's take acetone, and I'm going to show you guys this reaction where the first thing we're going to do is let's just use, let's use a methylamine, a little CH3 and H2, and then here's kind of the new part, right, oh actually sorry, CH3 and H2, we need to make an imine, right, imine, so not only do we need this C, you know, amine, but you know, we need H plus, we need acid, and we need to subtract off water, right? Key things from chapter 17, aka the carbonyl series. Okay, but once we've made our imine, right, that's the first step, step number one. Step number two is to reduce, right, to amine. And the way we need to do that is we can't use LAH because it's too aggressive. Okay, we're going to use something, sodium cyanoborohydride, which is a mouthful, and I'm honestly going to have to look at how, okay, yeah, okay, BH3, okay, yeah, so it's NaBH3Cn, sodium cyanoborohydride, which, if you just look at this, right, to us, all this means is a source of H-, minus but it's an appropriate strength that's going to help this reaction get done, okay? And all this does for us, guys, it just replaces our carbonyl with an amine. So, predicting the products, it's really not that bad. But let me just show you the mechanism, okay? So, I'm going to go a little bit fast from the first, oh, whoops, hold on. For us, it's going to look like this. Right? Sorry, my bad. I'm just gonna go through the mechanism from the first step kind of quickly to show the part that actually matters. Okay, so remember, to activate our carbonyls, we need to protonate first. I'm just gonna have H plus floating around, protonate our carbonyl. Right, our carbonyl is now activated and ready to go. What's our nucleophile? This amine right here. NH2, CH3, let's have him come in and attack, electrons kick up on oxygen. Remember, we have an OH going off to the left, we have our nitrogen piece going off to the right. CH3, H, H, plus charge, right? Okay, so what do we do next? We want to protonate this because we want it to leave. We're going to deprotonate our nitrogen. I'm just going to have this oxygen pick up the hydrogen, and I'm just going to have this nitrogen just kind of lose something. Somebody's going to pick it up, right? Someone's going to pick up this proton. Electrons go on to nitrogen. This, as we so fondly remember, is our plus H plus minus H plus step. Remember, right? So now we have, we have H2O plus we have water, and we have this nitrogen piece right here. And remember, we're going to eject water. What's the driving force? We're going to have a double bond form with nitrogen and carbon. And remember, this step right here is our minus H2O step. Okay, so everything up to here, we've already known. Well, actually, I'm going to clean him up a little bit. Someone will grab that proton. Okay. Everything up to there, we've known, correct? Absolutely. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Remember, this carbon right here, he's double bonded to nitrogen. He's partially positive, right? He's still susceptible to attack. We're going to introduce a source of H minus, right? So, what we're going to do. I'll use a different color. 
I'll even do this. How about this? I will draw this H in green. Right? One of these hydrides is going to come in and attack that carbon. Electrons go up on nitrogen. Oops. And right, I'm going to draw that hydrogen coming down right here. Right? And what I think I forgot is that you might need to add a third step, right? Or with this step right here, just add, I don't know, some ethanol, methanol, or just write, you know what, we can even do this. We can even write water, write comma water. And what that's going to do, right, now we have this nitrogen with a negative charge. Let's just introduce some water. That nitrogen will just pick up one of those hydrogens, do a dump over there. Right, and if I draw a final product down here, there we go. So think about it, guys. All we did is stuff we already know how to do. First step, protonate or carbonyl, right? You see your reagent, an amine, H plus minus H2O with a carbonyl. Protonate and activate the carbonyl. Attack with your amine nucleophile. Protonate OH, get it ready to leave. Deprotonate, deprotonate nitrogen, get it ready to stay. Form your amine, eject water. Do a cleanup step. Then enter in your cyan or sodium cyanoborohydride, which is H minus. It's hydride, but it's appropriate strength, right? Attack the carbon, the carbon in the uh, nitrogen carbon double bond. Electrons go up on a nitrogen. He doesn't want to stay that way, right? We want to just clean them up. So you have water or you have ethanol, right? You can have ETOH, just somewhere where you can grab an H to take away that negative charge. You could draw the lone pair on if you want. So let me erase this now that we've seen the mechanism. And I'm just going to, you know, do like a complete the reaction question. So to wrap up our conversation on reductive amination, let's just do two quick complete the reaction questions. One, we're actually we're going to predict the product. And the second one where, given the product and our reagents, we need to come up with what we started with. Okay, so let's check this out. Right, we have this little ketone coming off a cyclohexane ring. So remember, what are our steps with reductive amination? We're going to form an imine, right? Then we just reduce that imine to an amine, right? Sorry to be so bougie about imine and amine. I just, they sound very similar. Okay, so think about this, right? We see NH3 minus H2O H plus forming an imine with this guy. And if I'm going to draw the imine over here, just so I know what it looks like, right? It would look like this. Okay? So remember, this is what our imine would look like with NH3. All we do with the cyano or the sodium cyanoborohydride, H minus, appropriate strength is reduce it and the ethanol or water is there for the cleanup. So we just kind of make this imine into an amine. Here's our product. Okay, no big deal. All right, let's move down here. And I have plenty of practice of this, drawing the mechanism and completing the reaction on the worksheet. Down here, right, we see our product, we see our you know, first and second step, right? First step, we see ETNH2, we see ethyl amine, H plus minus H2O. Must have made an imine, then with our sodium cyanoborohydride and ethanol, must have reduced that imine to an amine. So remember, just like up here, your carbonyl carbon becomes the one attached to the amine. So you see right down here, this is where our, nit our amine is attached to our alkyl piece. So I hope you guys see, right, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and on this third carbon in the chain, that's where the amine is, which was the imine, which must have been the carbonyl. Okay, guys, I hope you realize that this isn't that bad, you guys already know this reaction. You just have to stick two pieces of stuff you know to, uh, you already know together. Okay, 
one more video with amine. It's called the Monic Reaction. I know you guys are going to be able to get through it, so let's do it.